In today's episode, I will teach you how you can check your own SSL configuration. Stay tuned. If you have your own website and you use SSL, you probably know about Qualsys SSL Labs, the SSL checker uh, server test that they have. Uh, it allows you to input your domain name and it goes and checks your uh, SSL configuration, the ciphers that you use, everything uh, related to your SSL certificate. And what you're aiming for is to have a very good score, like an A+. When you perform this check, the SSL Labs keeps the score uh, of how you did. You can see the most recent ones, uh, sites that it recently saw, and also the worst ones. If you click on mytrendphone.it, you see that it got the lowest possible grade. As due to having a series of misconfigurations and not being up to date. The, the certificate is out of date, it is insecure, it is not trusted. By looking at the configuration, they also found it to be vulnerable to various types of attacks. So this is an extremely useful tool if you have your own website. But what do you do if you have a system that is not yet available online or is an internal system that you want to verify your security for? Well, luckily there is something called testssl.sh. It is a offline version of the same type of tool that Qualsys provides. It allows you to test your configuration against all kinds of best practices Let's take a look in our lab environment. On the left here, I have my Kali Linux machine. On it, there is a version of the test SSL tool. If you do an apt search test SSL, you can see that it has a version 2.8, which is a little behind the current version, but it's still very up to date. But there is a problem with this. It is compiled against the system wide version of OpenSSL, and that version is up to date with best practices, or rather it has dropped all known bad ciphers. So you can only test on things that are good. So that's not really what you want. Uh, you want to actually test against bad ciphers so you can verify that you don't have those. The way you do that is by actually taking the version from GitHub. It actually has in its bin directory, there are pre-compiled versions of OpenSSL for the various operating systems. So there's for uh, macOS, FreeBSD, and I don't think there's a Windows version. So you need a Linux-based uh, operating system. So in order to get the tool, you click the clone button and then the clone URL. You copy it, go into your directory and issue a git clone. It takes a little while because of the binaries for OpenSSL that are part of the repository. As you can see, the binary directory is 17 megabytes big, so that's kind of hefty, but you actually need it. As with all command line tools, there is a help function. The tool by default will run every check it can, but you can also instruct it to only perform one specific check the uh, all those options are under the single check as now and then you can check whatever you want so now that we've checked out the tool let's give it a run uh, i will use my own website so i will do dot slash test ssl.sh and then do build fun things.com and just hit enter it will start running and it will take a little while all right, so the tool finished. Uh, as you see, it did a lot of the things that are also on the SSL Labs website. Uh, let's scroll through it. So first thing you see is the banner, and then it tells us which version of OpenSSL it is using and which ciphers or how many ciphers it has. With our specific version, it is important to note that it is using the OpenSSL binary that is part of the GitHub repository. This is the version that has all the ciphers and all the bad protocols. So you can check to see that they're really not there. 
So, and then it starts, it resolves the uh, host name to its IP address um, and the service detect is, uh, detected is HTTP. So there's a web server there. You can also run it against, uh, for instance, uh, a TCP based service that only has uh, SSL and will check that. Then it checks the protocols. So version two and version three of SSL are not offered, which is good. TLS 1, 1.1 are offered, but it is not good, not bad. It is just a fact. Uh, and I do this for uh, old mobile devices. TLS 1.2 is offered, which is good, which is the current standard and recommendation. And then there's the HTTP 2, uh, which are offered uh, as well, which is protocol that you can activate to have better performance. Then the details, uh, most importantly here, the signature algorithm, uh, the number of bits that are uh, used in your certificate. Uh, the trust, is the host name okay? The chain of trust, do, have you configured your chain of trust correctly? And then it goes and talks to your web server and says, well, did I get a 200 okay? It is very good. Is there clock skew? Apparently there's some clock skew detected which might be a false positive. I think it's a false positive in this case, but I'll check it out. And uh, the strict transport security is set to 365 days, which means that once the browser knows it should use an SSL certificate for my website, it will force it onto you. Uh, server banner, uh, use ng inks, any cookies or security header set. And then it goes and tells us about possible vulnerabilities in our configuration. So it pretty much tells us that my configuration is okay. The only thing is that I have TLS one enabled, which might mean that I'm susceptible for beast or lucky 13. Um, but TLS one, one and one, two are also there. So most modern browsers will reno re renegotiate on those levels. And after that, it goes into all the ciphers that are there. And then most interesting, you see this list at the bottom of all the types of clients, Android versions, Chrome versions, IE, Edge, Safari, Apple, Java, and OpenSSL versions, and the protocols that they will use to connect to your site. So we now know that IE6 and IE8 on XP as well as as Java 6 are unable to make a connection to my site. So if you have a customer that says, well, I, I use this certain piece of software and I cannot connect, you can use this tool in your own network. So there's no need to have an actual network connection to the outside world. And with that, you now know how to use test SSL to validate your SSL configuration. I hope you liked the video. If you did, Press the little thumb to give it a thumbs up. If you've not done so, press the subscribe button. You will be notified whenever I post a new video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next episode.